telling you, he, he truly is our champion, y'all. Truly, 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 he is our champion. And what Miss Edith was saying is so true, you know, they're trying to censor this and trying to censor that and they're deleting this account and deleting that account and they're taking people's Facebook, they're taking people's Twitter and they're taking this and they're taking that. You know what the truth is, is they can take anything they want to, but they can't take away the word of God. Yes. It's going to stand when this world is on fire. Yes. And that's why the Bible says to thy word have I hid in my heart so that I might not sin against thee. We may not have these things one day. I hope that it's not in my lifetime and maybe I hopefully that it's not in my children's lifetime, but I can hope that I can do my part while I'm here to teach them what the word of God says to where they can have it stored away to where when the government comes and knocks on the door, they'll know it, it, that it was coming for one because the Bible said so. Mm. And for two, they're still able to stand yes. and proclaim the gospel to be true. And she's, she's absolutely right. There were so many churches that, that were closed. A lot in the liberal, liberal cities, they were, they were closed down. And that's why I, I find it so weird that we actually uh, was laid upon our heart in the middle of a pandemic to start a church. That makes no sense, but God knew exactly what he was doing. And he sent people to the carport, and we were there for several months until we came here. And I'm just thankful that, that, that God has, has been faithful to us because we've been faithful to him. And he'll do the same for you. And what she's talking about with the mouth. And, and God is wanting to do something new. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about a new wine skin for new wine. You know, wine is, is a evidence of the Holy Spirit. It's, it's about God wanting to do something new. It's about God trying to give you something new. But you can't have new wine without a new wine skin. So that's what we're going to talk about. If you would turn with me to the book of Matthew in chapter 9. In the book of Matthew in chapter 9. We're praying for Caleb's grandmother. I believe she's on hospice and uh, she's not doing well at all. So she's at home with her and Chase stayed with her too. So um, we're praying for God to do, do something there. And um, I believe she's suffering a little bit and I just pray that God would heal her. Heal her in the way that only he can do. We're going to be starting in verse number eight. We've stood for quite some time, so y'all can just stay seated. Matthew chapter nine and verse eight. Listen as we read. It says, but when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. And Jesus passed forth from thence. He saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom. And he saith unto him, follow me. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass, as Jesus sat at meat in the house, behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Then came him, then came to him the disciples of John, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast oft, but thy disciples fast not? And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber mourn? as long as the bridegroom is with them. But those days, will, but the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they fast. No man putteth a piece of new cloth unto an old garment, for that which is put in to fill it, to fill it up, take it from the garment, and the rent is made worse. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break, and the new wine runneth out, and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. May God have blessing to the reading of his word. There's, there's so much in these verses right here. There, there's, there's just so, so much. And understanding what happened here is this is actually right after Jesus got done in Capernaum performing a bunch of miracles. Most recently, you'll see in verses 1 through 7 that he healed a man of palsy. 
And this is the same parallel with Mark chapter 2 when he's at Peter's mother in Peter's house and just healed his mother-in-law and he heals this guy. This is the same guy that his four friends took him to Jesus and ripped the roof off and lowered him down. This is the same time that they're talking about. So, but when Jesus leaves from there, everybody's marveled and they're just shocked and, and look at what Jesus did. But he comes by a man named Matthew and he says, follow me. Matthew didn't even hesitate. He arose immediately and he followed God. You know, you don't always have to have the right answers. You don't. You just have to have the right focus. And he, he had the right focus. Jesus said, follow me. And he did. He didn't hesitate. He followed him. So we don't have to have all the right answers. And his response was instantaneous and without any conditions. But, you know, we get in the way sometimes of what God wants to do. We do. If we'll be honest with ourselves, we love God, we trust God, but there's ways that, that we can miss what God has for us and we can limit what God's trying to do. Yes. The first thing, all of us are guilty, is we like to have an empty altar sometimes. Mm. Like there's nothing at all to pray for. Yes. Like there's nobody lost out there that we know that we can't cry out to God for. Yes. Now, I will go back and I'll take up for you because I'll take up for myself too. Back in the day, an altar was meant for lost people. And it meant that when you come down here, there was something wrong in your life. And what did you do wrong and all this and that? I, we are not going to be like that at Resurrection Church. And we haven't been. We haven't been. There's been people that have come down here and prayed during the middle of worship. And I'm grateful for that. Because for one, you need to be obedient to what God tells you to do. That's the first thing. But there's nothing like coming down here. This shows complete humility. That's what this is for. The altars are set up to show humility. It's not to come down here for you to be humiliated and to be judged and condemned by the people that are sitting in the seats. It's for you to come down and be humble to God and say, Lord, I'm giving it to you. Come on. It's not for me to sit back and say, I wonder what they did this weekend. That's none of my business. Yes. When God tells me what happened that you did that weekend, and I say something while I'm preaching and you, it hits you in the face. I'm sorry. Take it up with God. That's how it works. The Holy Spirit's walking up and down the aisles and searching hearts and searching minds. And then God's coming back up there and saying, here you go. Say that. Okay, I got you. Because I'm going to say it. Because if you don't think that I don't preach to myself more than I do anybody else, you're crazy. Because I do. I, I step all over my own feet. But these altars, I'm not, y'all don't, don't. <laughs> When we have our invitations, like, don't everybody run down here, okay? I don't mean it like that. This is not a show. I want you to be sincere and real with God. That's what this is about. And you're not going to receive any judgment, any condemnation. And I urge everybody, if you feel comfortable in doing so with the pandemic, if you want to come and pray with somebody while they're here, come and pray with somebody. I would much rather somebody pray with somebody than them be praying by themselves. Because sometimes just the arm on your shoulder... Let you know that everything's all right. I don't even have to hear what you're praying, but yes. I know that everything's okay because I got somebody with me. Yes. So these altars should be full because we all have something to pray about. I've got lost people in my family that I should be praying about. I got things in my own life with my kids and my wife that I need to be praying about. I got this church that I need to be praying about. We all got this church we need to be praying about because we do have an opportunity. We went through you know what in 2020. As a church and as a body of believers as a whole. And it only took a few that's going to stand and be faithful. So we have an opportunity brand new from the foundations to create something that you've always wanted to see in church. You're what they call the remnant, the beginning, the foundation. What, what goes up from the foundation depends on the foundation. So... Whatever you've wanted to see in church, whatever you've understood from God, whatever you understand of how church is supposed to be, non-judgmental, loving each other, hugging your neck through your problems, knowing that you screwed up and hugging you anyway. That's what church is about. We have an opportunity to build that right here, to have exactly what we need. But sometimes we miss the point, we miss the mark, and we miss what God wants because we don't have humility enough to pray because we're worried somebody's going to judge us and think we did something wrong. Mm. <laughs> for all they know, you could be praying for them. Mm. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 
And I hope you are, because I hope God slaps them right in the face and say, you shouldn't be talking about that about yes. people like that at all. Come on. You know? I mean, because we shouldn't be that way. We should not be judgmental in the church house. I mean, that's why we can't get people to come now. I don't want to go to church. I'm better off out here in the world. Like somebody put up the other day that there's Christians, better Christians in the bar than they are at the church. And that sounds stupid, but there's a lot of truth in that. There's people, there's been more fights in the church than there has been in bars in some cases. Yes. That don't make no sense. Mm. But it's true. It's true. Sorry, I just say stuff that other people think. <laughs> Another thing is giving up on lost friends. I've done that. I really have. I've done that lately. But there, there comes a time to where I, I believe that's okay, Matthew. I believe that I can cry out to God on your behalf over and over and over and over and over. And I can still love you, but I can love you from a distance. Mm, yes. I can love you from a handshake. I can love you from a wave or I can love you from a text. You don't have to come to my house and sit on my couch for me to love you. And sometimes we need to be separated from some people. And God knows that too. Yes. So pay attention to those signs. Don't work so hard for something that God's trying to tell you to let go. Yes. So we can't we can't forget about our lost friends because we don't want to limit God's work. I, me and Matthew have already been talking about this thing. I can't wait till the day where I can become a full time pastor and don't have to do anything but see about everybody and everything that's going on. I think that I would love to be able to do that after we build a church. I don't care if we're running two services right here and we have two hundred people coming. I would like to see that after we build a church. Hopefully that's next year. Because somebody's going to bless us. I'm telling you they are. We've had people that have been blessing us financially that don't even live in this state. So God's going to take care of us. The next thing is honoring Christ in our daily actions. That's another way why we miss what God wants for us. Is every single day, as hard as it is, it says to take up your cross daily. Die to self. We really need a nursery. Because my little boy don't know how to act. <laughs> or a spoon. Take your shoe off. <laughs> but y'all talk about that at the church. Y'all need to pray about that. But honor, honor Christ in our daily actions. Okay? Our daily actions. See, I said something about this Friday. The world needs to see consistency from a Christian. Because in all honesty, if you're a changed individual, you're going to have consistency every day. You're going to want to serve God in your daily actions. You're going to want to, because people say, if I go to church and get saved, I can't have fun. Why not? I do. I have fun. I want to praise God. I want to be around my brothers and sisters in Christ. I want to walk around with a smile on my face. It don't always happen, but I want to walk around with a smile on my face. Every single day we've got to serve God because whether you know it or not, people's watching you. People's watching. The first time that you put up an I Love Jesus post, there's people that are going to follow you just to see you fall. And if it takes a year to see you fall, they're going to point their finger at you and laugh and say, I told you, I knew that you wasn't changed. Yep. I don't care what you do 364 days, that one day out of 365, they're going to crucify you. Yep. And that's all they're ever going to remember. But either way, we've got to honor God in our daily walk, every single day. And then number five, or number four, is letting the past, listen to this now, mm -hmm. I know, I know y'all got a past because I got one. I don't, I don't know what's in it, but you got a past because you're here, right? Mm -hmm. Some of you've been here a little longer, got a longer past, Charles, but either way, you got a past. <laughs> so listen to this, I love you. Letting your past hinder your future response. <laughs> Letting your past hinder your future response. Right when God gets ready to bless you, with a new car. What's going to happen when you think about, well, Lord, I couldn't pay for the last one and they took it from me. That sounds stupid, but it's true. We got a great church starting going on. We, we need more people to, to, to see what we're doing here. God's fixing to bless us, right? But Lord, I remember what you did to the last church. I remember what happened at the last church that got a bunch of people in it. Letting the past Hinder a future response. A lot of people don't have any commitment. 
I understand things come up on Sundays. They have to on Wednesdays. But people don't even have a commitment when they don't have to go to church. <laughs> they don't have a commitment to search and see God during the week after church. We have more ways now than ever to find the Word of God. I don't know of anybody that does not have a smartphone. Very, very few people do not have a smartphone. Did you, I'm going to lie y'all something. Did you know that there was an app out there that has the Bible on it? Mm, come on. Did you know that it sends you notifications and alerts at a time to read? Yes. So we, are, we have no commitment. When I say we, I'm not saying we as in us. I'm saying we as the whole body of believers and Christians we're left without excuse and we have no commitment. It'll ding and say, hey, you want to keep your streak going? You've been on this thing five, six days now. Let's keep it going. There's no excuses. And then this one right here. I'm loving. Another way that we miss the call and limit God's work is letting routine rituals replace Worship. Mm. Mm. I have seen people of this church grow just since we've been here with the level of comfort and confidence to know that I can raise my hand and say thank you Lord. It doesn't matter if you want to carry the small TV like they said or carry the big TV like they said. I don't care what you do. Okay? But it, people are starting to understand that not only is it okay, God desires that. The Bible says that. And if you don't do it, the rocks are going to cry out in your place. And I would encourage you to read in Revelation when it says what it's going to be like when we get to heaven. It's going to be bright. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be loud. There's going to be nothing but singing and praising going on. So if you don't like it here, you sure ain't going to like it in heaven. I mean, I'm just, I'm being, I'm being honest. I'm being real. We can't have routine rituals anymore that's replacing worship to God. True worship. Some of these songs, man, and I, I don't know why, but I like the medium to the slower songs more than I do the fast songs. I want to do the fast songs in the beginning to try to get everybody to wake up. But then I want the slower songs because it's just like now it's time to have intimacy with God. Yes, yes. Because I want, to, I want to crawl up in God's lap. Yes. I, I, I want to please Him to the point to where He's sitting on His throne and He sees the worship that's coming from my heart. Yes. And He's doing this, but He's saying, come on. Yes. Come on. And I'm telling you, when you sit down in the presence of God yes. and He begins to move through the building, you don't have to look at somebody and say, what's going on? You know that God is in the house. Yes. And I thank God that we have a church that's not ashamed and not afraid to lift their hands and give him real praise and real worship instead of this routine ritual stuff to where he's like the old, the old saying growing up is the stiff neck Baptist to where you come in and you got to sit on your hands because you don't want to offend nobody and people's going to look at you crazy. But I've tasted and I've seen come that on. the Lord is good. Come on. I know that what, what I've been through in my life and what yes. God has brought me through, I can't come in here and sit down and people tell me to shut up. I don't need to shut up. You need to listen up is what come you on. need to do. Come on. And I'm telling you, that's what the world needs is the world. I'm, well, I'm starting to feel good. I should have brought come my on. overalls. I feel like come working on. this morning. Come on. Well, listen to me for just a minute. This Woo. is why I'm, I, I'm not trying to scare the kids, but yes. God speaks. Lord, help me, God. Come on. I'm just saying, Lord. Y'all, that's what the world needs to see is we need to be real. And we need to come in here and thank God that he brought you through coronavirus. Yes. Right. I know yes. you were down in the bed for three or four or five days and you were sick and you couldn't breathe. And, but you got something to be thankful yes. for now. And you yes. look over and your neighbors are being put in the ground. You look over and you say, God, I got another day. And you got another day because you got another purpose. You got another reason. You got somebody else that you need to talk to. You got somebody else that you need to live yes. right for. You got somebody else that you need to teach. I got four children. And they need to know what God's got for them. And I need to be able to teach you every single day, sweetheart, that God loves you and God has a plan for you. Yes. And I need to be able to try to protect my wife. And I need to be able to try to love my wife. And I need to be able to try Come to on. lead this church. 
and be the shepherd and take the flock and just say, I'm going to do the best I can. I'm new. I'm not even Come ordained on. yet. But Come God on. called me. God Come ordained on. me. Yes. God licensed me. And God Come put me here for a reason. God put you here for a reason. And this is what we have to live for every single day. Come on. We got to bring God the real stuff. Yes. Because he said that. He said that the Father seeketh such yes. for those to worship him in spirit and in truth. The spirit's here and the truth is you. Whatever's true about you right now in your life, that's true. Come on. That's true. Bring it with you to your worship. Bring the real worship. God, it's been tough. God, it's been hard. But God, I thank you. Yes. I got a bed to lay in. I got a roof over my head. It might not be much, but I got a meal that I can eat. Yes. When you dumb it down and you get down that level, God, how blessed are we? Woo. How blessed are we really? So God truly, truly deserves and desires the praise. We just got to bring the real worship and not the routine ritual stuff that people said on what we have to do. We're at the foundation, y'all. This church can be exactly what you want a church to be. And unless we stay focused, we'll lose it. Thank you, Lord. But I can tell you that ritual will never replace worship. Yes. Rituals will never, ever replace worship. I love how people say that. Well, Jesus hung out with sinners. Yeah, he did. But just like Matthew said the other day, you can see it in this scripture right here. He sat down and they came to him. He didn't go to them. They came to him. But he didn't leave them like they found them. He changed people. Yes. So if you do find yourself around your sinners and publicans, are we changing them? Are we living in a way that we can change somebody? I would hope so. Because the Bible says that in 1 Corinthians 6 and 20, it says, for you are bought with a price. And that price is Jesus. We're bought with a price. But then there's another part of that verse. If you're bought with a price, the rest of that verse says, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. I want to be bought with the price, but I want to stop right there. Thank you for buying me with that price. But nobody wants to glorify God in their body and in their spirit. Yeah. It goes back to what I was saying on Friday. You thought in that video if you watched it, right? If my people, which are called by my name, we're not even his people. We're not even his people. We say we are. But if we are, we understand that we're bought with a price and we need to glorify God in our body and our spirit. She's talking about it in 2020. It's what I was saying that she, she just has a way to do that. That's why when she says she's got something to say, I'm going to let her say it. You know, it worked last time, it worked this time. God knows what he's doing. But we do understand that Romans 3 and 10 says that none are righteous, no, not one. I get that. Our righteousness is filthy, filthy rags. I get that. Right? But we need to strive for perfection every single day. To please God and to show people who God really is. But a new wine skin comes through a working process. A new wine skin does. These bottles that they're talking about in here, these, these aren't bottles like glass bottles. These ain't clay pots. These are bottles. These are wine skin bottles. They were made out of goats most of the time, but they're wine skins. See, there's a process for a wine skin, but you don't need a wine skin unless you're going to get new wine, right? You don't need new wine until what? Until the harvest is ready. 
I can't make wine out of nothing. So 2020, our mouths were, they tried to shut us in Louisville, but we did the exact opposite. We, we were like blind Bartimaeus, right? Glad Jesus was walking by and he started yelling. They said, nah, did you need to chill out and hush? And he got louder. That's what we did, right? We got, we got louder. When they wanted to close our mouth, we opened them and screamed louder. Yes. So the harvest is here. But there's no workers. That's why we're here. So we got the harvest. Now it's time to get the wine. Well, <laughs> trying to get wine, it's got to be pressed. That's how you get the juice out of the grapes to start making your wine. I think we went through some pressing already. And we're going to go through some more because we need to get more new wine. Mm -hmm. But Jesus wants to give us this new wine, but we got to have a new wine skin. So that's what we're working on now. All the stuff that you went through, all the stuff that you went through, all the stuff that you went through, that's that wine skin. We got to have that new wine skin because you can't put old or new wine in all the wine skin because it's already been stretched. But to get a new wine skin, the first thing that has to happen is something has to die. Whether it be a goat, a lamb, something has to die. That's the very first process. There's something that has to die in our lives sometimes. Most of the time it's us. We need to die to self. You can't even begin to have a wine skin until something is dead. So there's a lot of stuff that needs to be dead and killed in our lives. And then the next thing that has to happen is you actually have to, you have to skin that thing out. You have to cut away the skin from the meat and the tendons to separate it from everything else. Y'all see what's happening there with us? There's stuff that's dying inside of us that we don't need. We're being cut away from the people that we don't need to be around. I'm not saying we don't need to be around lost folks. I'm not saying that. I'm saying but there's, there's some people that you don't need to be around. And we're being cut away. Just like this wine skin. Mm. Get it away from the meat and the bones and all that. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing it has to do when you have this skin sitting here now, you need to wash it. We need to wash it. We got to get all the dirt and the grime and the grit out of it. We're being washed, people. We're being washed. We're being cut away from folks and we're being washed. And then you have to shave it to remove the hair. Because we're fixing to put wine in this thing. Then you have to shave it. They'll take it and they'll, they'll, they'll shave it down to where it's nothing but skin on both sides. And then you gotta stretch, you gotta, you gotta stretch it out. You gotta stretch it out while it dries. We're being stretched. I was stretched this morning mm. to the point where I called Miss Edith and was like, are y'all coming? <laughs> I text Bird, I'm like, are you coming? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> tried to text Matthew, but he didn't answer me until late, but I'm just like, Lord, I'm being stretched. And here's one of my flaws, and the devil knows this. But right before my wife and the kids got here, I started shouting to God to take away my discouragement. Because the enemy knows that I get discouraged easily. I really do. I've got the confidence to know that God's going to do what he said he's going to do. But sometimes I get discouraged at waiting on that to happen. So I said, Lord, don't, don't let me get discouraged. We're still going to have church. But we're being stretched out. And then the skin has to be sewn together. And I believe that's what's happening with us. Is we're being sewn together. We're being intertwined with each other. And we're being sewn together to be that wine skin that he needs to put in new wine. Because he's not going to give us new wine in an old wine skin because it's going to bust. Because when it begins to ferment inside that wine skin, the gases begin to escape. And the new wine skin is flexible. It's elastic. It stretches with the gases in the wine. 
And that's what's happening to us. We're being refined. We're being skinned. We're being separated. We're being stretched. And we're being sewn together because God wants to give us some new wine. It kind of goes back to what happened six or eight months ago when he said, you can't have your house full until your house is full. So when we get full, then we can't help but bust open on people. So that's what's happened to us. Something has to die. Of course, we're going to have our enemies that try to come against us. And don't ever try to pray that God would kill your enemies. Because I read a, I read a verse where he's going to prepare a table in the presence of our enemies. Yes. Never said they were going to sit down and eat with us. Amen. But he's going to prepare a table in the presence of them. That's how we're being stretched and sewn together. And that new wine skin that we're going to get is going to be adaptable and flexible and it's going to... The point of it is, is what Jesus was bringing here and what he's brought to us is something new. It's, it's newness. And this is something new. This is something new to everybody. But the newness that he's bringing can't be confined. It can't be confined. And we're making strides to get it outside that door. But I encourage you this morning that... I got to run back there and start this other song. But I encourage you this morning that rejoice in the sufferings. Just like she said, rejoice and be happy in the sufferings. Because we're being stretched and pressed for new wine and to become new wine skins. Rejoice in your sufferings. Y'all, these altars are going to be open. Of course, we got plenty to pray about, but everybody don't run down here. I didn't mean it that way. Just let the Lord deal with you, okay? Let's stand and... Uh,